Bismillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd. So today we're going to talk about <coughs> something that's very important related to the other issues of uh, purification that we spoke about before in class. And this has to do with, of course, keeping your garments pure and keeping yourself clean, making sure that you make not just we do, put, you, I'm not asking you to sit there. Go sit in your chair. Sit in your chair, both of you. And what you can see what you, you need. Just read on your your uh, notebook. So we're going we're gonna to talk about today, listen up, we're going to talk about keeping your garment pure when you are using the restroom and keeping yourself pure. That this is a hadith related to that subject, that being careful of those two things and also being cautious about speaking about other people, okay, and spreading it. So in this hadith, it was a hadith narrated by uh, Ibn Abbas, <coughs> radiallahu anhuma, who said, uh, an Ibn Abbas, radiallahu anhu, قال, مر النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم على قبرين وقال فقال إنهما ليعذبان وما يعذبان في كبير أما أهدهما فكان لا يستتر من البو وأما الآخر فكان يمشي بالنميمة فأخذ جريدة رتبة رتبة فشقها نصفين فغرز بكل كبر واحدة فقالوا يا رسول الله لما فعلت هذا قال لعله يخفف عنهما ما لم يبسا Okay, and in this hadith, this is a hadith that was narrated by Ibn, uh, Ibn Abbas, radiallahu anhuma. He said that the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, walked by two graves, okay, and said, Verily they are being punished, and not for something that seems like a big sin. As for one of them, as for one of them, he used to speak about people and spread it. And as for the other, that he used to not protect himself from getting urine on, on himself. So then the Prophet ﷺ took a wet branch and he split it into two parts. Okay? It was a fresh, wet uh, branch. <coughs> And he split it into two parts, and he put one part on one grave and the other half on the other grave. And then the Sahaba, they said, and I forgot to write that in the board here for you guys. The, the Sahaba, they said, فَقَالُوا uh, يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ لِمَا فَعَلْتَ هَذَا They said, O Messenger of Allah, why did you do that? And then the Prophet wasallam responded by saying, perhaps their punishment will be lightened while the branches are still moist. And this was collected in Muslim. So now we're going to talk a little bit about the meaning of this hadith, so that way we have a better understanding. So the Prophet ﷺ was walking through, uh, you know, basically a graveyard, or past a, a grave area where there was graves. And <clears throat> when they were going past a couple of graves, the Prophet ﷺ said, Verily these people are being punished in the graves. But they're not being punished for something that's something that the people think is a big deal. Okay? So the Prophet ﷺ was was letting his companions know that uh, some knowledge from the unseen. Ilm al ghaib This is some knowledge that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given him just a little bit of knowledge. So in this case the Prophet ﷺ was aware that these people were being punished in their graves. This is something that was given to the prophets. The prophets, they had certain miracles. They sometimes were given a little bit of knowledge of the unseen, but they didn't know all the knowledge of the unseen. That knowledge is only with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the knowledge of the unseen. But the prophets and messengers at times were given certain facts or, or prophecies so that way they could warn their people. They were given knowledge that would be beneficial to carry on to the people who uh, followed them. So that way they could better practice their religion. They could come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this right here 
with some of that knowledge. Because when we go by, grab, past graves, we can't hear uh, what's going on in those graves. We don't have knowledge of that. We only know, we believe as Muslims, that there is a, a day of judgment. And we believe that when people die, that they're in the, what's called the life of Al-Barzakh, which is the uh, a life in between the full afterlife. That this stage, that when a person dies, that they maybe are getting punished in the graves, or they're having, uh, you know, they're having a... I guess you could say a relaxed time in the grave, that their grave is comfortable. So your grave can either be a place of torment because you are a wicked sinner, maybe the person, not meaning you, but meaning the individual who's being punished in the grave uh, was was a wicked sinner. They didn't believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, or they were committing major sins and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose to punish them for those sins. They had to be accountable for what they did in this life. So these people will receive punishment in a grave, okay? And those people, you know, who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala maybe pardons or uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or they were very strong believers and maybe they, their sins were minor and Allah forgave them, then they will not be punished in the graves. All of this is uh, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So going back to the hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said there were, he he received this information from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that these two individuals were being punished in their graves. And then he said, and as for one of them, he used to speak about people and spread it. So the scholars, they say that this, you know, we call this, uh, this isn't exactly backbiting, maybe it's, it's uh, a type of slander, that when you're speaking about other individuals, and sometimes it doesn't have to necessarily be a negative thing or a lie, but you're just carrying that speech and you're spreading it around the people. And that people and that person doesn't want you to spread that information. And you're spreading it around the people. This is what uh, Namima is, what they mention in the Hadith. Okay, And so one of those individuals who was being punished, he uh, was an individual who... <clears throat> who was doing Namima when he was alive, that he was spreading things about other individuals. He was spreading it around the community or spreading it around other individuals. As for the other individual, he used to not protect himself from getting urine maybe on his clothing, okay, or on himself. That means that <clears throat> when, they, when you go to the restroom, this is a warning for us that we have to be careful to clean ourselves properly. Okay, we have to clean ourselves properly. We can't be uh, sloppy or careless in cleaning ourselves. So, as we spoke about before, when making istinja, you know, when we go to the restroom and we're using water to clean ourselves after we urinate or after we defecate, we have to use urine to purify ourselves with, and we have to try to get all the urine clean ourselves. And, and, and any other filth that may be left, anything that's left, okay, that is something that's not desired. We have to purify ourselves and clean ourselves properly, Fudley. You understand? Good. <clears throat> so, this other individual was being punished because he was careless in cleaning himself. Maybe he didn't make a stinja. Maybe he didn't clean himself at all. He didn't use tissue. He didn't use... Uh, well, obviously, in those days they didn't have tissue, but maybe he didn't use istijmar. He didn't make istijmar. He didn't use rocks. He didn't use leaves. He didn't use water. Whatever. Or he could have been careless with those things. He could have used those. He could have used uh, uh, those things to purify himself, to clean himself, and get rid of the najasa. But he could have been careless with that. He could have been not getting, not trying to be thorough in purifying himself. So then the Prophet Sallallahu then went and he took a wet branch, similar to this uh, stick I'm chewing. I'm not saying the branch was similar to this, but I'm just saying, showing you an example. And he broke it in half. He broke the branch in half. And it was a moist branch. And he put it, yes, it was a wet branch. That's what it means, moist. And he put it, put one on one grave and another on the other grave. Okay. And then the Sahaba, they were, they thought this was a very strange thing. They they said, or you know, and we said, or they said, 
you know, the narrator Ibn Abbas said, and they said, meaning the people, they said this, they thought this was very strange, Ya Rasulullah, لِمَا فَعَلْتَ هَذَا O Messenger of Allah, why did you do that? Because they'd never seen anything like that. They didn't know if this was an act of, you know, if this had something to do with worship, they didn't know. Because this wasn't a common practice that someone would break a branch and put it on a planet on the graves like that. You know, so they, they hadn't seen that. They didn't know why he did this. Why the Prophet ﷺ did this. And then the Prophet ﷺ responded by saying, Perhaps their punishment will be lightened while the branches are still moist. That while those branches, before they dried out, this was a way of alleviating their punishment. This is something that was unique to the Prophet ﷺ. There were some miracles and things that things that only the prophets and messengers could do. Okay? And that's only because Allah gave them the ability to do so. That's why we believe in those miracles. We believe in the things, for example, Jesus, he healed the sick, he, uh, sick, he brought people back from the dead. He, he had many miracles that were amazing. And the only way he could do that is because Allah gave him the ability to do so. It wasn't because he just uh, could do those things from his own accord. But those abilities were only given by the one who created, the Almighty, the one who created us, and the one who gives us the ability. Okay? Yes. So, uh, listen, 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 finish, let me finish. So, the miracles, this miracle that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi was uh, that was witnessed by these companions, they witnessed that the Prophet ﷺ put the uh, branches there and that it made the punishment lighter for the individuals in the grave. Although they couldn't see, but this is what the Prophet ﷺ said. He said, perhaps their punishment will be lightened while the branches are still moist. What does he mean lightened? Means that it will be <coughs> less. less their punishment, yeah, less harmful, less severe. Less harmful. Good. That's a good word. <clears throat> good. Going to some of the benefits of this hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. The first benefit is that this hadith proves uh, to the believer that there is a punishment of the grave. Because some people who are even uh, consider themselves Muslims and so forth, they say that there is no punishment in the grave. They say, no, we don't believe in that. They, they have their own reasons, their own arguments for why they, they think, they, they, because they only use what, you know, according to their understanding, according to what they see in, through their senses. If they can't see it in, through their senses, they don't believe in it. And this is the way of many philosophers and, and, and other individuals who only believe in what they can see and hear. If they can't see and hear it or detect it with their limited ability in, in their senses, then they say, hey, it doesn't exist. That's what some people who don't even believe in God, they have this belief. They believe, hey, I've never seen God, so I don't believe in Him. And that is, of course, uh, disbelief as a Muslim. As a Muslim, we don't believe like that. We don't believe that you, you know, you're going to be able to t detect everything and know all knowledge just from your senses. You know, and that's where our iman comes. We we read. None of us have met the Prophet sallallahu but we follow his his example, and we follow the authentic hadith, the authentic authentic narrations on the Prophet sallallahu We believe in them, okay, and we believe in the things that he prophesied, and all the prophets and messages. We believe in what Jesus prophesied, and what Moses and Abraham, and all the way up to Adam alayhim after salatu wasalam. We believe in all the prophets and messengers. Even though we've never seen them. And we never have, uh, you know, we only know what's of their message. And the only thing that we have left is the Quran and the authentic Sunnah of the Prophet. ﷺ. So from those things, we don't limit our, our knowledge by our own senses because our brains are limited. People only use a small percentage of their brain power. Okay, And then even if they use all of their brain power, this is what science tells us, even if they use all of our brain power, they would still be limited. It's nothing like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's infinite knowledge. Okay, So again, this hadith shows us that 
there, it proves to us that there's a punishment in the grave. The second thing is that this hadith proves that being careless about purification is a major sin and it's something that a person will be punished in the grave 